a stoma is um, an opening in your a stomach wall, um, a colostomy will always be on the left hand side which is um, a, an outlet from your colon, an ileostomy will be on the right hand side, it will be in the small intestine which is the, obviously the ileum and then the third one would be a urostomy which uh, deals with various urinary problems usually as a result of cancer or one of the um, similar sort of uh, uh, diseases which would need major surgery where you could no longer have your bladder actually functioning properly. The colostomy would be required uh, usually as a result of uh, having had uh, some form of investigative procedure whether it's a, a scan uh, or um, a colonoscopy uh, when as a result of, the, uh, of that investigation uh, a tumour would be found which would need to be removed uh, it may be uh, diverticulitis, uh, where sections of the colon have become so d damaged that they can no longer um, withstand the pressure which they would be subject to, and so that the uh, that section affected by diverticulitis will be cut out. Uh, in some cases, the two ends of the bowel can be uh, reformed and stitched together during the operation. I had diverticulitis, and uh, in my case, the, uh, uh, the actual extent of the diverticulitis was so great that the colon couldn't be sewn back together again, and so I had a permanent colostomy. But um, there are various other times, for example, um, in Crohn's disease, people might have uh, a section of their uh, colon removed, um, and it may be possible then to rejoin it. Um, or in some instances you might have a temporary colostomy just to give your bowel, as the surgeon would say, give it a rest for a few months and then it would be joined together again at a future date. Uh, but in, in most of the instances uh, it is a permanent situation and most people will then understand that they, they are going to have a bag for life but we say that you're, it's probably better to have a bag than be in a box because there is no doubt that having a, a colostomy is a life-saving procedure. A permanent ileostomy involves the removal of the colon and the formation of a stoma which is made from the ileum and brought out onto the wall of the abdomen so that bowel movement can pass through the stoma into an external uh, appliance which is attached to the abdomen. A temporary loop ileostomy involves um, the formation of a loop of intestine which is made to rest the bowel for an internal pouch or if there has been a bit piece of intestine removed um, due to cancer. Complete removal of the colon will be necessary when inflammatory bowel disease conditions become so severe that they become unresponsive to medical treatment and also due to patients who have polyposis. I have stoma due to erective vaginal fistula. These fistulas are often caused by childbirth or Crohn's disease, although in my case they're not really sure why I have it. Before I got the stoma, I was terrified. It seems like the end of the world, don't really know anything about them, it's something people don't talk about, um, didn't know what to do. I had a very, very helpful stoma nurse who talked me all the way through it, understood it was the best thing for me to do, went ahead and did it. At first, it was hard. You know, it's a new thing you have to get used to. Somebody said to me, you will get back to normal. Frankly, I didn't believe them. I thought it would be horrible. But genuinely, a few weeks later, did get over it. Life does go on. I work full time, I go on holiday, go abroad, have kids. It's, it, life is good with a stoma. The clinical nurse specialist in stoma care has a varied role. The main parts of that role would be to see the patient preoperatively, that means before their operation. They see them usually in clinic, sometimes in their own home. And that would be to talk about the types of surgery they're going to have and discuss any worries they have about the surgery, maybe even to teach them how to use the stoma bag before their surgery. They would also see them to cite them so that they have a mark on their abdomen prior to surgery to make sure the stoma is in the right place and not in a dip or crease and it hopefully won't interfere with their clothing. Post-operatively, meaning after surgery, patients will be seen in the hospital on the ward, usually once a day, sometimes twice a day. And that would mean we teach them how to change their appliance, 
how to clean around the stoma and how to reapply the bag. And that will help them become confident so that on discharge they know they'll be able to manage at home. Once a patient has a stoma formed, they will always have a stoma care nurse. The stoma care nurse may have a clinic in the hospital or in the community, but it's really important to know that you can always have support from your stoma care nurse. Even if you have your stoma reversed, you may have support and follow-up after that, and ongoing care is required for the short term after your operation. Having a stoma means you can lead a full and normal life. I work full time, I've got two children, I go on holiday and do pretty much everything I used to do. Some underlying medical conditions might restrict certain things, but on the whole, life goes on as normal and is good. Patients undergoing stoma formation can lead a normal healthy life after surgery. However, there may be some adaptation they won't want to make. That's where a stoma nurse or clinical nurse specialist is really important to help with the psychological impact of stoma formation and how they can adapt to normal lifestyle, whether it's clothes, whether it's just the management of the stoma care. I'm often asked the question, can someone who has a stoma lead a normal life? And that's a question that's often asked, and of course you can. And in fact, some of us achieve far, far more had we not received a stoma. Having a stoma gives life back. It gives you a quality of life that you never have if you have Crohn's, diverticulitis, anything that makes you rush to the toilet. If you have IBS, you've got to plan any journey you make from toilet to toilet. You've got to know where the next public convenience is. Once you have your stoma in your pouch, you are in control. A person with an ileostomy or an internal pouch can lead a perfectly normal life following surgery. It doesn't preclude them from doing anything that they did previously. The condition that I had that required surgery was ulcerative colitis and I developed that in my early 20s and at that time it was fine, I was managing to live a normal life, I was taking the tablets and then unfortunately things changed and my health deteriorated and it wasn't possible to continue with the tablets which weren't really helping it. I was offered surgery which I agreed to have and that involved having my colon removed and a permanent ileostomy. Since that time I haven't looked back. Living with a colostomy doesn't mean to say that you aren't normal. It doesn't mean to say that the clothing you have to wear needs to be any different than the clothing you wore prior to having a stoma. In fact, you can probably wear the clothes that you wore prior to having your operation. The really important factor is that you feel happy and comfortable and that there are specialist uh, clothing out there that will support the stoma. For instance, if you have a parastomal hernia, there are support garments that you can have that will support the hernia. But there are also other garments, undergarments for instance, that will also support the bag. And if you feel happy wearing those and comfortable, then that's all that really matters, that you're happy, you're, you feel independent with your stoma and comfortable. Comfys was established in 1998 as an importer and sourcing agent producing fashion garments. In 2004, a family member was taken ill and had to have a stoma. That person is my father-in-law. Uh, we realized um, early days he had a lot of needs. One of the problems he had, he was conscious of his um, stoma. So we realized he needed help and we decided to use the knowledge and the experience we had in the market to produce a garment which could help and support him and try to give him the benefit to live a normal life as much as possible. And realized that um, this product could benefit a lot of other people like him. So we decided to put a lot more energy and time to explore that market and try to make life easy and simple for a lot of people similar to him. When I was seven, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Um, having Crohn's disease at any age or any illness is horrifying and difficult to put up with, but at seven, it had a real knock-on effect on my life. Um, throughout 10, 11 years, I went through many medications and treatment options, but unfortunately, nothing worked. And in August 2011, it was decided that I'd need surgery to save my life. This surgery would change my body and life forever. After my operation, my confidence just went totally um, and it was then when my mum decided to find me, well, try and find me some products that would help me live a normal life.
This was when she found Comfys. She searched on Google and found their products. She ordered me a vest, um, some underwear and a support band in a neutral colour. Um, the, the products have really helped me get confidence since my surgery. The neutral colour means I can wear them under any clothes and I don't have to be paranoid about them showing. Another quality I love is that you can wear them in water, so when I wear swimwear it gives me that extra boost that I need to be around the public. Comfies have taught me that having a stoma does not define you, it's simply part of who you are and Comfies have really helped me to embrace myself living with a stoma. Thank you Comfies. Some of the best innovations are often the simplest and that's what comfy stoma support wear range is really. We've taken breathable, high performance sports base layers, seamless technology and applied it to stoma support wear to give the ultimate comfort. There are no internal labels to irritate sensitive skin. As I said the garments are seamless so there's no compression marks. The fabric is breathable so it wicks away moisture better than cotton and they offer gentle compression without restricting the flow of the stoma. Comfies are, have worked really hard to come up with products that make a difference to people's lives and we're very proud that recently we won a BHTA award for our innovative product range, that's the British Healthcare Trading Association. We care passionately about what we do at Comfies having been affected personally. We constantly strive to improve innovate and further develop the range that we have. Um, we're always talking to healthcare professionals on a regular basis because they have the hands-on experience and we attend hundreds of open days and support group meetings with patients to talk about what they need and how we can improve what we offer. Comfy's stoma support wear range is quite unique in that we offer a level one, two, three system with increasing levels of support to meet various situations. Level one are the light support wear, the everyday wear that's meant to replace regular underwear. We have unisex boxer and a ladies brief which are high-waisted designed to sit up and over the stoma site, securing it, helping to reduce leaks and hiding it. There's also a level one vest which is useful for people with either multiple stomas, high-sighted stomas, or high hernia that, that wouldn't be practical to support through underwear. So the vest gives support from the top down, if you will. Um, also in the level one range is the waistband, which is a very versatile garment, can be positioned to suit the wearer. All the garments have a two-way stretch that allow total freedom of movement. The waistband can be worn for swimming, underneath swimwear for extra security, or just to give further discretion under clothing. Patients are encouraged to wear a level one support garment of their choice as soon after surgery as possible. Um, this will help to increase their confidence, um, it holds the bag securely in place and improves their self-image, which enhances their speed of recovery in returning back to normal life. The level two support wear is slightly firmer than the level one. We just have um, a brief and a boxer in that range. And those are useful for people that want to take part in physical activities or manual labour and need to support those abdominal muscles. Or also if they have a hernia and they want some relief from the symptoms of the hernia. The level three support belt is a heavier girdle for very physical sports or for an established hernia. It has stabilising ribs throughout to keep the shape of the garment. And we normally don't advocate holes in any of our support garments because that replicates where a hernia wants to push through. But because the level three girdle is so firm, it requires a hole to pull the bag through. But then we have the prolapse cover, which then goes back over the stoma site to put support back where it's needed. With the level three belt, there's also the option to use a stoma protector, which is a rigid plastic protector which simply velcros onto the front of the belt and that's for situations where you want to avoid any unwanted um, impact on the stoma which could be for contact sports or even even if you're on um, a car journey where the seat belt is going to be over the stoma for any length of time then the protector can help any irritation. We're one of the only companies that actually offer a range of stoma support wear for juniors, which allows children to be as children should be, carefree, whether they have a stoma or not. We have girls' briefs, um, which are available in a variety of colours, but we're, we're very proud to introduce the pink and the boys' blue um, 
but they're also available in black, white and neutral as well. And we have vests for children which are ideal for um, situations at school like PE when they have to undress to give them that privacy and security to get on with playing the sports they want to play. We also have waistbands for children which allows them to wear their regular underwear if they choose to but still want to cover the stoma or ace site with the waistband. A variety of styles and levels of support are available um, to meet all needs regardless of age or gender or level of activity. This concept of um, choice in support wear garment is great for compliance and reduces waste because in years gone by when only heavy support girdles were available they would often end up in a drawer because they weren't comfortable to be worn for any length of time. Comfy's um, support garments because they're designed to replace regular underwear and comfort is the ultimate aim. Although they may give lighter support than a heavy support girdle, they give support for a longer period of time, often all day and all night, which can be preferable than heavy support intermittently. All our garments are available on prescription, making them accessible to all. Um, we do try to keep the price as affordable as possible so that people can also buy extra garments beyond their prescription quota if they choose to. Um, it's hard to believe really that these garments with their aesthetic appeal and comfort are actually medical support garments helping thousands of patients improve their quality of life with a stoma. I first came into contact with Comfy's garments about four years ago and introduced them to my patients um, who find them superior not only in comfort but for their discretion as well. The NHS supply chain supports the National Health Service and other healthcare organisations within England and Wales. We provide one point of contact for over 600,000 products. The NHS supply chain wanted to provide stoma garments for the trusts so that nurses could educate patients before they went home on how to manage their stoma. Products are available on the NHS supply chain website. We understand the need to feel normal after surgery. Nobody wants to be different. We provide solutions for those patients who suffer from conditions similar to stoma. Our aim is to provide him comfort, confidence and dignity to live a normal life. People going on holiday obviously is a big question mark when they've just had a stoma. But uh, the, w one of the worst uh, fears of them, of them is the full body scanner, which has recently been installed at Manchester Airport. But we did a, a trial with it and we found that it doesn't reveal anything as far as your pouch is concerned. So people have no fears as far as that is concerned. Going on holiday shouldn't pose a problem for the ostomer. But what they need to do is prepare well in advance. So, and by doing that, they should be able to take a travel certificate with them, get it stamped by the GP practice, perhaps ask their doctor for a letter, which would you know, give weight to the fact that they have a medical condition, and also take um, a note of their prescription with them, so that if any time they're stopped by a security official, they can present them with this information. And hopefully then they'll be empathetic and, and take them through the airport speedily. People with ileostomy and internal pouch going on holiday need to consider first of all that they have the appropriate travel insurance and this is a pre-existing medical condition that needs to have the right cover. We can supply information that will help them get that cover. The next thing they need to consider is going through uh, security at airports and we supply a travel certificate which is in nine languages and is signed by a GP and is a useful tool to have going through security. We've also taken measures to ensure that the security staff treat people with these conditions with discretion and sensitivity. The person who's considering taking a holiday once they've had stoma surgery does need to consider a few factors when they're planning their holiday. And firstly, they need to think about travel insurance. If you have an ileostomy or an internal pouch, it's classified as a pre-existing medical condition and therefore you need to consider getting suitable travel insurance that will cover that condition. Mia Online was created in 2002 with a view to enabling its membership to store, access and edit their medical information on a secure website. It had become apparent to the directors through their experience in travel insurance that when people fell ill abroad, it could take days for them to obtain their medical information and for the treating doctors overseas to make an informed decision. 
The membership is valid for one year and each member has their own individual membership card with an individual number on it. The members themselves or medical personnel can ring the emergency number and after various security checks can access any pertinent medical information that the member has chosen to store there. It soon became apparent, however, that many, if not most of the members, were finding it impossible to obtain any, or certainly not in affordable, travel insurance. Therefore, out of that arose the Mia Clear to Go travel insurance policy, which has now expanded into the Mia Clear for Takeoff policy, and whose destinations extend worldwide, and for which there is currently no upper age limit. Mere online, um, when they sell insurance, it's not just purely about selling insurance and making the money from it. Um, unlike many other companies, uh, we actually look into the medical side of things, we look at the geopolitical side of things, we look at how people are travelling. At the end of the day, we want it to be a win-win for everybody, and that obviously includes the insurers as well as the insured. Quite often we'll talk to people and ask them how they were travelling, you know, whether they've had any recent problems from their treatment, not just their disease, just to make sure that we can't foresee any problems. The other things that we do is we look at the hospitals, at the resorts that they're going to, and we're making sure that the resorts there have either adequate facilities or, or adequate medical staff there for them. And that's not always the case. Sometimes we'll look at um, countries at high altitude, which people haven't thought of if they've got some brief problems. So it is a win-win for everyone and we ask people to be as honest with us as we are with them. We'll look at things like taking with them some precautionary antibiotics if they've recently been on chemo. Um, we're looking for little slip-ups that may occur that they probably haven't thought about and given the prices that we charge we obviously have to be very careful. So we're also looking at the costs of treatment Quite often when young children are involved, especially if they've got terminal prognosis, the parents, they're frustrated, they don't know what to do, so they're looking at perhaps sending them to Disney World in America to see Mickey Mouse. Well, that's, that's a real trek for a person who's not ill, but for a small child that's been very ill, that's far too far for them to go. And they're going to end up feeling very unwell when they get there, even if it's only just from the jet lag, let alone their illnesses or their treatment. At Mia, we do a very unique way of screening. We actually talk to people. Uh, we talk to them as if they're human beings, that they happen to have a disease or an illness, and we're more interested in how they cope with it. So all we ask is that people are honest with us. So we're looking for any problems that they've had, not just with the illness itself, but with the treatment perhaps that they've, they've had. Um, we're looking to see where they're going. We're looking to see what the climate's like there. We're looking to see what the medical facilities are like. Uh, we're looking to see how they're going to get there whether or not their particular treatment would cause them any particular problems over there, whether or not um, we're happy with either the hospital facilities or the, or the treating methods over there. And when you look at the costs involved, what we're trying to do is to make it reasonable for everybody. So, for instance, someone going 65 or under to two weeks in Spain, they've perhaps got some cardiac problems, they've had bowel cancer, they've got your usual high blood pressure and high cholesterol, that's going to work out just over £60. Now that's not a lot of money when you consider how much the claims are. And an average claim, let's say for the USA, would be £5,000 a day, and that's not including the cost of the doctor or the cost of all the investigative treatments, etc. And even in perhaps repatriation from Spain, where you can use your e-hit card, you are talking between four and £20,000 just to get home. So one claim, you have to sell an awful lot of policies. So what we're trying to do is to make it a win-win for everybody, that the clients can A, get insurance, and B, get it at an affordable price, that it remains profitable for underwriters. And the way we can do that is to ask relevant questions, give the best advice that we can do, and hope that our clients will come to us and be as honest as they can. Clear to go is a policy, travel insurance policy for people with pre-existing medical history who find it hard elsewhere out there. Um, there is no um, guidelines with whether we do it or not. It is case by case basis. The only things that we ask is that basically within 60 days they can take out the policy. They cannot take it out before and they must use a reciprocal health agreement where there is in place. Obviously where there isn't they will go to the facility that there is nearest to them but where there is, it must be going to the state facility. So European countries all have a state facility and they must go there. GP must have a note on the records within the 60 days again 
to say they are medically fit to travel. Now that's very important and all we want to know is basically that the GP has looked at them and said, yep, you're fine to go away. We're not asking for complete definitions of whether they're going to be okay on the trip. We just want to know when he sees them, are they fit enough to go? The MIA membership basically allows our customers to store access and edit any information they would like. And all that happens is they pay a small fee, either for a family or individual. We give them a little key ring and a card. And basically, we give you a username and a password. They go onto our website, and it's all leaflet, a leaflet goes out to them, or on the website. They go on there, and they can store access and edit with the username and password. And basically, how I look at it is it's like an online file of facts. So if you were out and about and you're in a different country, um, basically give you a, a number to call 24 hours, um, seven days a week. Um, we have quite good language um, people here that will be able to speak the language for you or interpret anything you need to interpret. Um, and the other thing is, with the, it's like an online finer facts, they can then have a little card, ID card on them. It says obviously their ID, the number, and if a doctor or anybody needed it, they could look it up, go on there on the internet, it will bring up all of their files, you see. Rather than carrying around other cards, paperwork, anything, it, any allergies are on there, birthmarks, dental records, it is all stored on there and it's for their, for their purpose only. Um, I myself have quite a serious medical history and, and as such uh, found it quite difficult, regardless of my numerous qualifications, uh, to find work, to find an employer that would accept me um, with the condition I have. Um, here at MIA Online, uh, it, it actually is a benefit. Um, it helps me to uh, relate with, with customers so um, I can understand what they're going through. Uh, and quite often people find it uh, quite relaxing quite to, to associate with, you know, when I've had that kind of condition, um, that procedure, that operation, I can relate with, with, um, with people so I can talk to them about where they're travelling to and what, what they may face. Um, here at MIA Online, the directors really empower us to um, think outside of the box um, so that we don't follow any scripts, we take our cue from the customers. Um, so we can, we can really explain, you know, we've been trained so well that we can, we can really explain the reasons behind certain decisions. Dear Sirs, I recently applied for a 12-month travel policy for myself and my husband and I'm writing to compliment your company on the courteous and efficient way that this was carried out. After approaching several other insurance companies, which was very time consuming and complicated, your approach was far more relaxing, health issues and other details being dealt with quickly and pleasantly. Unfortunately today we find ourselves complaining about most issues and the uncaring way things are dealt with forgetting the few occasions when we are dealt with so efficiently. I have already recommended your company to friends and hope you may benefit from this. Thank you once again. Yours sincerely, Mrs J Ackroyd. All the staff at MIA are aware how hard it can be for people who have just suffered a recent serious and debilitating illness to make arrangements for a holiday and to find suitable insurance for such a holiday. Such a holiday, however, can indeed be just what the doctor ordered. We are able to provide you with sensible, professional, compassionate advice with regards not only to your insurance, but also with regards to your travel arrangements in general. People can find out about the Colostomy Association uh, mainly nowadays by Google or certainly by things like the, uh, the, je the local stoma nurse will possibly put them in touch or their colorectal surgeon or other people that they get talking to at the surgery or whilst they're in hospital. You can find out about IA by contacting your specialist stoma care nurse or by using our website www.iasupport.org or indeed by using our free phone telephone 0800 0184 724